So Davis James here down in the Angler's All Studio. I'm here to talk to you today about the Lineberry. Upstairs here in the shop, we have a fly line to represent nearly every target species you can chase on the fly. Here at Angler's All, we're interested in fishing it all. Hashtag fish it all. And we're interested in chasing all kinds of species. And there's really no one fly line out there that can do it all. Um, both in fresh or salt water, and you really need to be optimistic about all the possibilities that there are out there. So what we did is we got all the shop guys together to take a look at all the fly lines they fish regularly throughout the season and give you some insight as to why they selected those lines, what they like about them, and what they use them for. So uh, let's take a look. Hey everyone, Blake here from Angler's All. Uh, I wanna talk to you about a couple of my favorite fly lines I'm fishing right now. I just got back from a trip to Southern Chile, Patagonia with our friends at Cinco Rios. And I used uh, two of these lines here uh, to great effect. And I wanted to talk to you about why I chose these lines for trout fishing down there. The first line I want to talk to you about is the Anadro series line from Scientific Anglers. Uh, this is my favorite big dry fly, dry dropper fly line. The reason I like this line so much, especially in the textured series, is that it really loads your rod quickly and it turns over the biggest of dry flies. Uh, we were fishing size fours and six beetle patterns down in Southern Chile and, uh, and having a line that can deliver a cast 40, 50 feet with that big fly on the end was super important to catching fish. Uh, this line also has a really long rear taper, which gives you great control at a distance casting uh, and also great mendability. Uh, this line is, is often thought of as a nymphing line, but I love it for, uh, for six, seven weight rods, uh, big dry flies, big dry droppers making a long cast. Um, another line I'm going to talk to you about is one of my uh, new favorites is the Big Nasty Sink Tip 4 Density Series from Rio. Uh, this line is, it was a game changer for me for a sinking line because the running line and the rear taper is, is floating. Uh, and not only does that allow you to pick up that line off the water easier, when you've made that 30 foot cast, you're stripping in uh, 10 or 15 feet and you need to recast. Uh, that line, that floating line, is a thicker diameter and it's easier to handle. Um, it allows you to make a big cast without, uh, without worrying about a very thin running line. Uh, so this line was awesome in, uh, in Chile as well. Uh, both this line and the Anadro are, are great transitions into the trout fishing we have here in the West. Colorado, Montana, big salmon flies, dry flies, uh, big streamers with this big nasty line. And another line that I want to talk to you about that uh, is, uh, is something that I think a lot of people shy away from because of the name, this Rio single-handed spay line. Um, I used this line to swing flies long before I bought a true two-handed rod. This line is designed to, uh, to give you the single-handed rod angler uh, a great option for swinging soft tackles, swinging streamers, and really roll casting into tight places um, with a lot of bush behind you. This simulates your classic two-hand Skagit sets, Skagit and Scandi, or, or really more Scandi probably, setups with a long front taper uh, and, and good, uh, good body in the back for roll casting. So if you've ever thought about swinging flies, if you're intrigued about trout spay, uh, but maybe don't want to jump into a two-handed rod just yet, pick up one of these lines from us. It'll, it'll allow you to, to practice your roll casting, uh, even some spay casting and, and give you a great opportunity to swing soft tackles and small streamers in our Colorado rivers. Uh, those are my favorite lines right now, guys. Thanks so much for checking in and, uh, and let us know what questions you have. Hey, Ben here, about to go down to the Keys in a week or so. Uh, a couple lines that I'm gonna be taking with me. First one is the Direct Core Flats Pro line with the Stealth Tip. It's an intermediate tip that helps get those flies just under the surface, uh, if you're fishing some choppier water, it really helps to get that bait fish pattern that you might be fishing just under the chop. 
The line I will be fishing the most is the Grand Slam Amplitude Series line from Scientific Angler. I do like the rear taper on this. It does have an aggressive head, but the rear taper is long enough that it allows you to, to lay down a pretty gentle presentation to some spookier fish like bonefish and permit. I am fishing the textured series. It does come in other, other series in the smooth and a mastery. Uh, I like the textured series because it doesn't have as much friction as it's going through the line or through the guides. With that AST Plus technology, it really helps to cast a little bit further and smoother. Definitely a good thing to have in your arsenal when you're fishing any sort of species, whether it's a tarpon, bonefish, or permit on the flats. Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Dakota here at the Angler's All studio, and I just want to talk a little bit about fly lines. We're moving away from our tail waters and trout tapers, you know, all that, that technical soft presentation stuff. So as the lakes start to thaw, I'd like to fish a lot more streamers and leech patterns, and my first choice is going to be the Titan Taper. This here is a floating line. It's going to let you fish down in that six foot range or so if you count things down use a long leader. They do make a sink tip version as well if you're fishing deeper reservoirs or water. Um, after streamer season at Ice Off I like to move over to fishing coronamids and damsels, that fun midsummer stuff, and it's all really going to be the one to three feet under the water. So this Rio subsurface line is perfect for those figure eight retrieves and um, tricking fish on those damsels. Once we get later into fall and then we do some dry fly fishing, there's calabatus, caddis, then the Rio Perception's a fantastic line. If we decide to tie on a big hopper, a damsel, it's gonna turn right over, and then if we have a small calabatus, it'll be a soft presentation. And uh, same deal if we decide to do some static line nymphing and fish slip indicators, this line's gonna be able to mend well, push through the wind, and uh, pick up and recast easily. So these would be my top three lines for fishing the still waters come summer. Andrew Pulford, Angler's All, Travel Coordinator, coming at you today with the Jungle Lines from the Library. Um, over the years, I've had the opportunity and I really enjoy my time in the jungle from Nepal and India from Asir to uh, Brazil for giant peacock bass off of a boat. You know, going into the jungle, it's always a little bit of the unknown regardless um, of the most up-to-date reports. It's a very changing environment. So with that, I like to take you know, the traditional heavier flies and a pretty wide range of sink lines, floating lines, big poppers, things to only, not only draw them out of what is likely heavy brush, but be able to dredge those bigger flies for them also. And that's where the SA and Jungle, SA and Rio Jungle lines come in. Um, most jungle lines are built with a heavier core strength. So, you know, what you're really doing is trying to fight that fish off of a log, out of a mangrove, out of the bush line, at any time. Um, jungle fish are generally less pressured, so they're, they have no idea how to fight. They panic a lot more than, say, a, a tailwater trout here in Colorado. The fight is just more explosive and exciting, and that's a big draw to it. Going into the jungle, again, um, part of the excitement is that unknown, and you're generally pretty isolated in any jungle angling environment. Going up with the right gear is always going to be key uh, here at Anglers All with the line prairie, jungle rods. Um, we're pretty well equipped for, for everything from brook trout on a two weight to golden dorado to peacock bass to tarpon on the fly. Come in, check out the line prairie. Come pick our brain about jungle trips, ocean trips, wherever it may be. Um, if we don't know something, we know a guy that knows something and that's going to be key to your success. Swing by, give us a call. Let's talk about jungle things. Okay, hello, this is Brad from the Angler's All. I was gonna go over a couple of lines here that I like to use. Uh, use these in the last year. My all-around line is the Infinity line. You can use it for dry flies, nymphs, small streamers, uh, tailwaters if you're fishing nymph rigs. Uh, another SA line that I've fished uh, in the last uh, six months is called the Trout. Um, this one works really well on the softer action rods, the medium rods, like uh, some of the Winston rods, the Pier for lakes. Um, which is something I really like to do in the spring and summer. I like this subsurface real Camel Lux line. It's an intermediate line. It sinks, it sinks very slowly. Um, it's good to fish from anywhere from two or three inches under the surface down to about three or four feet, depending on how long you count it down. Great for damselflies, midges, scuds, calabatus, small streamers. Great lake line, especially when there's a little chop on the water and you need a direct connection to your fly when you're fishing in a lake. So. These are the fly lines that I've been using. So 
come in and give them a try. Hi, this is Greg. Today I want to just talk about a little bit about some different fly lines that we could all think about as possibilities for our fly fishing. And it's a great opportunity to look at some of these new spay light lines from scientific anglers. What makes these lines really unique is that they're designed for some smaller rivers or for trout spay, meaning that the heads are gonna be a little bit shorter. Yeah, so this winter we've been fishing the Skagit lines. Skagit lines are, think of the Skagit line as a, as a shorter head, much heavier, very massive, so that we can put on a tip, a tip that has some sinking capabilities. We may put about three feet of tippet on the end of this and then a heavier nib, um, streamer. So the fish are starting to look up more. So what I've been really excited about is starting to fish my Scandi lines more. A Scandi line, think of it as your dry fly line with your single hand rods. It's a longer taper than the Skagit's. Still fairly short, but still longer than the Skagit. They're lighter. We can put on a just a regular long leader, put on a dry fly. We can either swing it, we can present it so we get a nice drift, or we can put what I really like to do is put on one of these intermediate uh, poly leaders. Then on the end, I'll put on some tippet and then uh, tie on a little soft hackle. This way I'm swinging right in the film. Those flies might only be about three, four inches deep. Fish are looking up, coming up eating the fly. And when you feel that grab, it's just exciting beyond belief. So hope this helps out. Hope this, this gives you a little bit more ideas between some different tapers. And I hope you have fun fishing this way. So Davis, the media guy here down at Angler's All, here to talk about a couple tapers for the Linebrary. Uh, the Linebrary is in addition to the shop. It's essentially just a stockpile of fly lines ranging from GTs on down to brook trout. We're gonna have something for the jungle traveling angler. We're gonna have something for the stillwater junkie, fishing calabatus, damsel flies. We're gonna have stuff for people hucking streamers and meat on tailwaters and on freestones here in Colorado. And, you know, the library is an option opportunity for our customers to come in, see these tapers firsthand, check out the color, get an idea of what the taper profile in the box looks like, and really get an in-depth idea of the options that are out there for fly lines. A lot of people fish all year on the same lines, Rio Golds and MPXs, Perceptions, Trout Series lines, and that's fine. Those lines are phenomenal for tailwater fishing here in Colorado and a lot of the general purpose trout fishing we get into. When you start talking still water, you start talking moving streamers and stuff with more mass, uh, it really brings into the conversation lines like the Titan Sink Tip from Scientific Anglers. It's gonna have a three inch, this particular model I've chosen is a three inch per second. It's a pretty moderate line. It gives you the opportunity to let it swing if you wanna to continue to target fish in the tail out. But with that heavier front tip and a, and a short leader with a heavy fly, you can really get that fly and down into the zone in some of these pocket water areas that we fish. Um, moving forwards, I'm excited to go tarpon fishing this spring, hence the tarpon amplitude smooth line from Scientific Anglers. I really have chosen this line to add to my saltwater arsenal because of its 45 pound core strength. Um, the smooth attributes that it has, the amplitude is a very slick line. It shoots through the guides very easily. It lifts and re-delivers the fly with ease. But uh, having something with a little bit more mass that's gonna enable me to put that fly and reposition it with as minimal false cast as possible is really gonna be the best thing for me. This has a stealthy color as well, a 45 pound core, and it's ultimately the best tool uh, for the game of tarpon fishing in my opinion. So um, if you guys have any questions about lines, wanna come in and check out the Linebrary and uh, see what's out there in terms of fly lines. A lot of times the fly line can do a lot for a rod that you're either tired of fishing or not totally pleased with its performance. Change your fly line out before you consider you know, buying a whole new rod. 
Um, the fly line is really what brings the life out of most fly rods on the market. We'll see you on the water.